And I, over the years, you've you've laid a lot of drainage utilities around Jonesboro, uh, northeast Arkansas. Um, so you're no stranger to uh, the needs of trench safety equipment, trench shield, shoring, right. things like that. Um, but I understand y'all had uh, your son was involved in a uh, in an accident um, in a situation that that most contractors typically would have deemed no big deal paid it no second mind to needing shielding shoring anything like that can you tell me a little bit about that i can jordan my oldest son was in charge of laying some storm drain on a job here in jonesboro and the trench was um, five foot deep or so where he'd started and i had been by the job and i'd said you've got to lay this back it's a, it's a class C soil. It's just, it's just an awful soil. It's loose and it doesn't look good. Lay it back. And he laid this back and he dug through a retention pond and when he started his next run of pipe, um, the trench was three foot nine inches deep. It's Friday afternoon. I'm assuming everybody wanted to get off and they elected for whatever reason to classify that as a better soil and not lay that back. And even myself being three foot nine inches, could have never dreamed what was coming next. But uh, as they were going through, he was down in the hole uh, surveying, great in the hole, right. to check it for him. And one of the operators yelled at him to watch out, and by the time he heard it, uh, a large chunk of clay soil, about the size of a backhoe bucket, about the volume of a backhoe bucket, just rolled off of the top of the trench and fell on him. We were uh, laying, I think, 24 inch pipe, metal pipe in the ground, and. Uh, we had just laid one stick and we were digging out for another one and I was just sitting in the hole taking a break while he was digging and one of the guys yelled at me and said, watch out and before I could even think, it, dirt was just on top of me. And I mean, it was probably something that I could, I mean, it's something that you can't fully explain to someone but having the dirt on top of me it just it felt like that I wasn't going to make it, that I was going to die within minutes if something didn't happen. And uh, they they started digging me out with a shovel, and I I I mean I was I was freaking out. I was yelling at them. I said, "No, you're going to have to get me out of here quicker." So they took the bucket on the excavator, got as far away from me as they could, dug the loose stuff back, and finally got it down to about my knees and dug me out with the shovel the rest of the way. And I mean, even after I got out of the dirt, it's just, it was, I mean, the pressure was relieved from that, but still felt. You could tell something wasn't right. Exactly. It fell on him and it crushed his pelvic bone. And I've learned the hard way, that's the worst bone you can break in your body. If you break your neck and it doesn't sever your spinal cord, you can heal that faster and easier than wow. you can this pelvic bone. He ruptured his bladder, his spleen, broke a rib, has a grade two separation in his shoulder, which is pretty serious. He spent 22 nights and 23 days at the Med Trauma Center in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, it's only been a day or two ago that he was able to put weight on that foot and walk on it in water. He's two weeks away from crutches and six months to nine months from the time of the accident for a full recovery. It's the PTO accident of farming for the construction industry. Right. Years ago, the PTO was the biggest killer in the farming industry, and this is just the PTO accident. It's the thing that's overlooked, it's not given any thought, it's not thought about, and it's the most dangerous thing we do. I mean, he, he essentially had your Tahoe pin hit, fall in and pin him against, that's against exactly the wall. exactly what happened. That's and, exactly. And I think when people think about that yard of dirt, how much that weighs, they don't equate that to a large SUV. They think they, that if some dirt falls on them, they'll be okay. But then they question that when you mention, you know, could you crawl out of here if, if my SUV was on top of you? Like you said, nobody thinks as a, even a four to five foot trench. Most people wouldn't think of that as nothing to be afraid of. But I mean, just the weight of the dirt on me, I've realized that, I mean, it don't matter how deep it is, if if you get covered up, you, you, I mean, you might not make it. I feel, I feel blessed to be alive. I mean, if it, if it were a five foot trench, I would, 
I'd be dead today. I mean, the way our company sees it now is that everything we dig is either going to be pulled back if it's not so deep, or if it's deeper, we're going to have the trench box, like you say. And I, I mean, I think everybody should should look at it that way.